Hi everyone, it's that time of the month again, ready for another Smart Art Box. Now, to be honest, I haven't been doing the Smart Art Boxes for the last couple of months. I've just been so busy, um, but I do want to get back into doing them and I want to get back into actually doing the artworks in them too. So that's what I'm planning to do in this video. We're going to go through the box, see what comes in this, and then we're I'm going to do an artwork um with the supplies we get. So let's just get right into it. All right. So as always, we get our little smart art pamphlet and we'll go through this afterwards. I'm gonna put that to the side right now, but look at the cover, that's so pretty, right? Okay, so the first thing I see in here are these really long Princeton brushes. And this is a round four and a fan six. These are huge. They're so long. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of painting with really long brushes, but uh, I guess we'll have to try these out and see how that goes. I also, oh, of course, I see the treat. So this is a mini pops in banana, banana something. So, eh, not a huge fan of banana. Probably just get rid of that. Here's our Smart Art sticker, and I love this one this month as well. So that's pretty cute. Okay, then I see this Artist Palette Knife set, and it looks like we get five different ones. So one, two, this one doesn't say anything, but I'm assuming that's three, four, and five. So we'll check in there, but this is really nice because all I've had so far are these like plastic palette knives and they're pretty like flimsy and uh, I mean they work okay but I'm kind of excited to actually have like a nice set of palette knives now. So we must be doing some sort of painting. I wonder if it's acrylic paint. I mean by the looks of this it's sort of like abstracty like realistic abstract. We'll see. Okay, so these are canvas texture boards. Um, these are from the Crescent. We've been getting a lot of these lately in our boxes, which I don't mind too much, um, but it comes with three. They're five by seven. It says uh, it's canvas textured surface on rigid board. Great with acrylics, gouache, oil pastels, and mixed media. They're easy portability. They're easy portability, perfect for plain air use, and they're pH neutral. So that's kind of cool. And we get two of these, so technically we have six boards now. So that's kind of cool. And now, oh, it's oil paints. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the box now. Okay, so these are the Talons Art Creations Quality from Holland since 19, no, 1899 oil colors. So it looks like we get 24. Oh, those are kind of pretty colors. Let's open it up and see what they look like. Okay, it also comes with this little pamphlet, oil colors. Okay, it's a step-by-step -step plan. So this package is sort of giving you another little step-by-step -step on how to create a painting. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. That came in with this little pack. So it's giving you some tips and stuff. So, hmm. And these are the colors that we get. So it looks like some dark, some browns, a dark blue there. And then these are some more blue, some reds. You get two whites. This is, uh, looks like zinc white and titanium white. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You do get a variety of, of colors, to be honest. Okay, let's look at this now. So the paint set is 24 set. It retails for $22.95. And these paints, um, these ones are not water soluble. So you will need a, a solvent or just to use the paints themselves. Okay, it would have been a little easier had they given us some water soluble uh, paints, but that's okay. Um, the palette knives, 
retail for $7.99. Um, the brushel, the brushes here. Now it says these are Ashley Natural Bristle brushes in a four and a six, but the brand says Princeton. Oh, okay, it's Princeton Ashley. So they retail for $13.50 or it's $6.75 each. And the Crescent boards retail for $6.26 each or $12.52 together. And it says that they are a 100% wood cellulose core that has been upgraded from a recycled noose cord to provide a much finer and smoother surface. So that's kind of pretty cool. So also in this um, pamphlet, it always gives you like a little history of the medium that you're using, gives you your tools. It gives you sort of like a quick project that you can do. So I'll kind of hold this up here if you want to pause it and read it. And then there's also your advanced project. So if you want to do something a little more advanced, and then on the back, you always get your project pointers and your prompts for the month. So the prompts this month is Bloom, Reflection, Vase, and Sunshine. And those are our project pointers. So I'll read those quickly before I get started. And then you always have the Smart Art Weekly Challenge. So what this is, is if you've completed all four prompts, and you don't have to do all four of them at once, you can do one a week or you can do them all in the same project. Um, but if you post it on your social media and you tag um, Smart Art Project and Smart Art Weekly, you can earn 500 Peacock points, which is roughly worth $5 towards your next purchase with them or your next box, which is pretty cool. So you're sort of, if you complete the challenges each month, which I haven't been doing, you can sort of put that 500 points or roughly $5 towards your box each month. So you could get a $5 discount, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm going to see what I can find here for the prompts. It looks like we're going to be doing some sort of flower with a vase, a reflection, something like that. So I'm going to sketch something out on one of these boards and we're going to get right into it. First, I'm going to talk about the palette that I'm using to blend these. It's technically not really a palette at all. It's just a piece of smooth Bristol paper. I didn't have a palette to blend these oils on. And since they are oils and I mostly use watercolors, I didn't want to take one of the palettes out of my watercolor sets to blend these on because, you know, oil and watercolor doesn't mix or oil and water doesn't mix. So that's why I chose to just put a piece of paper underneath and blend on top of that and it actually worked pretty well the paint didn't stick to it just like you know a, a thin layer of it kind of stuck to it but it was easy to move around and scrape off and blend on top of it so the smooth bristol paper worked really well and the way I got the um, piece of art the canvas there to stick to the paper was I took four pieces of tape and I just folded it over on itself so that it would stick to the paper and the canvas and I kind of got it to stick there so that it wouldn't move around and I wouldn't cause too much destruction on my uh, table here. Now you see pretty quickly in this piece that I lose that brush uh, pretty quick. I did not like that brush at all, that Princeton Ashley round brush. I found it just soaked up a lot of paint into the bristles, but it didn't really put much onto the canvas because my plan at first was to use that brush for most of the work because I did have, you know, a few smaller details. I wanted the sky to be nice and blended. That didn't happen, but that's okay. Um, and I even was using some of my Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. Now I love using that with my colored pencils. And I found out um, that I could use that with these oils as well. So I tried cleaning the brush out and you'll see that I even smudged some color around in the sky. The brush did not clean great. And mind you, I've never used oils before but I just found that brush did not perform well. So I think once I lost the brush and I decided to go in with the palette knife and sort of stop focusing on trying to make perfect details and just started to slap paint on the canvas, I had so much fun doing this. Um, 
I think it was the brush trying to make it perfect that was really frustrating me. And once I lost sight of trying to make this perfect and just putting some paint down on the canvas, that was actually really fun. Now, another point that I want to say about these paints is they are pigmented. For student grade paints, these are actually paint pigmented. And I didn't realize how much white paint I was going to need to use because the, the wall, you'll see it turned out sort of a a yellowy color and the table turned out a very bright pink but I wanted those to be like a very light light beige color and you know a very light pink and even the vase I wanted that to be like the lightest of a lavender color but once I started mixing the colors I mean I had to mix so much white into that to try to tone the color down and to really lighten it I think by the time I was done this I had gone through at least half of that titanium white um, oil paint and I wish they would have given us two of those because really the zinc white I find didn't do much at all. And I know zinc white is typically not as opaque as titanium white, but honestly I feel like it did nothing at all uh, to tone the colors down to lighten them. So I wish they would have given us two of the titanium white paints. So a lot of the time if you watch my tutorials you hear me talk about your lights and your darks you know you really want to get some contrast in here if i look at this piece it's pretty much all mid-tones because i quickly realized i was going to have boatloads of paint if i used enough white to get it to the color that i wanted so i pretty much just used what i had at that point now i was trying to use all four prompts so you'll see where <laughs> I started to do the shadow of the vase and I did some little dots to the left side of it and in my mind that was the, you know, the sun coming through the flowers causing some shadows on the table but realistically I would have had to make those shadows go a lot more slanted because technically they look like they're beside the vase but in my mind I thought, you know, I need to get some <laughs> shadows on the table there and the shadows when I was doing it on the paper, it looked so much darker than when I actually put it onto the table. It almost came out to be the, the exact same color as the vase was. So again, you almost need to add so much more dark paint to darken up the colors too. It was a very different way of painting for me. And by the time I got to the flowers, I knew I wasn't going to get the details that I was hoping to get. And every layer that I was adding to this, if I didn't put enough paint down, I was sort of scraping into the bottom layers. Um, so what I did was I just started dabbing paint on where I wanted the stems to go. Of course, they're a little bit thicker than I would have liked them to be, but that's okay. So I just started dabbing the paint on. And again, with the purple flowers, I just started dabbing some paint into places where it might look like a flower. And it actually kind of looks cool. If you look at it from the side, the flowers and the stems are a little bit raised up because I did dab that paint on quite thickly. So it has a little bit of texture look to it, which I kind of don't mind. And same with the clouds in the sky. I kind of started just slapping that white paint on there to try to fix the sky and make some kind of like abstracty clouds you know and um, I kind of like the texture that it uh, did leave on the canvas. Now I would never have bought an oil paints for myself and this is one thing that I love about the smart art boxes is most of the stuff that I get in them I would have never bought for myself to use and that's really nice because we get to try something different. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't but I find they do curate their boxes pretty well. The only thing I wish that they would have added to this this month would have been a little bit of solvent because um, I feel like most people if they haven't used oil paint wouldn't have a solvent and I wish they would have added some sort of like palette that you could use to mix on maybe but other than that I feel like this was pretty fun to try out. Would I try it again? Mm, I'm not sure. You know I did learn a lot doing this project so maybe if you would like to see, you know, a version 2.0 of this, let me know down in the comments below because if enough people want to see it, I would get these oil paints out again and use them again for you and, you know, see, um, you know, this is the, the first time I did it, this is the second time, what I learned and stuff like that, but otherwise I might just put these paints away. I've been sort of accumulating a box of um, stuff from my art boxes for a future giveaway, you know, down the road sometime, maybe when I hit a thousand subscribers in, you know, 10 years, whatever. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, so let me know if you would rather me put these aside for a giveaway for somebody that might actually really want to use them. Or if you want to see me do, you know, another project with these and see if I can actually make it good. Now, overall, do I hate how this came out? Now, overall, do I hate how this came out? No, it's the first time I'm using this medium. I didn't really watch any tutorials because, as I said, I'm not an oil painter, so I don't really tend to watch people oil paint. Um, I did, you know, go through the pamphlet a little bit and tried to read some of the tips, but most of the time I like to just jump in and learn on the go, and boy, did I do some learning with this. But once I let go of the perfectionism and sort of just embraced um, really laying that color down like we were meant to do with this, you know, oil painting box, um, I think I did end up having fun with it. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I am posting more videos. And thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.